Welcome to the You Need More Money podcast. I'm your host, Matt Monero. I come to you every week from my studio in Dallas, Texas, in an effort to help you get more money. How do we fix this epidemic that's going on in America? I have a book coming out March 20th of 2018 that's going to take my stab at it. The book's called You Need More Money. I appreciate all the likes and the reviews, the shares of the podcast. It's important to us. So please keep those going. But let's get into today's podcast. How do you tell your spouse that you're broke? You're financially behind. You know it, and it keeps you up at night. The beauty of this podcast, though, is that it's just me and you. You don't have to tell anybody that you're broke. I already know you're broke. You already know you're broke. And together, we're going to fix it. The one thing you have to do, though, is you've got to start taking some accountability to your brokenness. And if you don't even think you're broke, that's cool. Maybe you're in accumulation mode. Maybe you're rich. But we've got to get you to the next level. And the first way you have to get there is by total transparency between me and you. I'm not going to ask you to tell the world your brokenness today. I'm going to help you tell your spouse. Because odds are you're hiding stuff from your spouse. And if you don't have a spouse and you're not married, you don't have to tell your significant other of it, but you got to tell yourself. I mean, when I was doing the research for the book, You Need More Money, it was absolutely unbelievable. I ended up writing 75,000 words, and the publisher cut out almost 25,000 words. And basically, the 24,000 words, because it's about 51,000 words is what the completed book is. Basically, the 24,000 words that were cut out were data, massive amounts of data that I collected for the book to prove my point that everybody needs more money. And they pulled it out of the book. They think that it's actually good for the second book, a follow-up book. Maybe, who knows? You need more money 2.0. But I was upset. I mean, I was like, I did all this doggone research and you guys yanked it. And they're like, don't worry about it. There's plenty of research in there. And there is plenty of research. There's tons of data in it, just not as much as I actually wanted. So guess what? I'm going to start spewing some data on the on the podcast. The, the reality showed me when I was researching for the book that the average family in, of four in America makes $51,000 a year. They live on $51,000 a year. Family of four, paying all the bills, cars, trying to save for retirement, college, vacations on 51 grand. Man, that's tough. But it gets worse. 69% of Americans have less than $1,000 in their savings account and 35% have zero. Shocking. Dangerous. But it's true. And even though you are doing better than some of these stats, maybe, you still don't have enough. And you and I both know it. And let's start to fix it. Here's how we're going to fix this this brokenness problem that is eating you up from the inside out. It's keeping you up at night. It's got you scared to death. The first person you got to talk to about your brokenness is you. You've got to begin to really understand what your situation looks like. I'm not asking you to tell the world about it. I'm not asking you right now at this moment of the podcast to even tell your spouse. I'm just asking you to do the research for yourself and start to collect some data. The first thing I need you to do to start to get honest and straight with your money situation is you got to run a budget. And don't worry about living to the budget. I just need you to run a budget. I need you to collect some data. So you're going to take out a piece of paper. It's very simple. It's not complicated. You don't have to go to Office Depot and buy some fancy form or worry about where you're going to download it. A pen and a piece of paper is going to do it for you. At the top of the piece of paper, you are going to write down the amount of monthly revenue that you have coming in after tax. What is the net? If you make $10,000 a month and and they take out 35%, you're living on $6,500. The top line is going to be $6,500. Next, you're going to start to write down all of the expenses. It's a simple budget. And you don't have to do it in public and you don't have to do it with your spouse at this moment. You can do it just right now, me and you. Take out a piece of paper at the top, write down your monthly net after tax, your take-home income, and start to jot down your expenses. 
And when you're done, I want you to take the revenue at the top. I want you to minus out the expenses and it is going to create a plus or a minus. You're either going to have more money at the end of the month or you're going to have more month at the end of the money. That's step number one. Where are you in the money situation? How much do you have left over or how much of a deficit do you have? I'm not even going to get into the crazy specifics about a budget, but the reality is if you want to create a great budget, you actually need to start to write down a lot more expenses than most people do. Most people will just write down housing and food and transportation. You got to write down date night. You got to write down birthday presents. You got to write down Valentine's Day. You got to write down Christmas presents. You got to write down the vacation fund. You got to write down all that stuff. But if you don't want to go there with me, that's cool. I just want you to write down your take-home pay at the top, minus your expenses, and see what that number is at the bottom. While you're at it, I want you to go a little bit further. I want you to actually create a personal financial statement. A personal financial statement is a simple thing. It's a page, usually one page. I'm going to give you the download where you can get it in a minute. You can just type in Google, but I'm going to give you a specific one that I've used in the past. And it talks about your assets, what you own at the top, minus your liabilities. And when you subtract your liabilities from your assets, it's going to give you your net worth. I've been running personal financial statements for years, for decades, because it tells you where you are. How much do you have? Do you have more assets than you have liabilities or do you have more liabilities than assets? Either way, it's cool right now. I'm not telling you what's right or what's wrong. I'm just telling you start to collect the data. Because in a minute, when you start telling your spouse how you do it, I'm going to give you the support to do it. If you want a good personal financial statement, a template, go to score.org, score.org, and type in the search bar, personal financial statement. It'll pop up a template, download the template, and just do the fill in the blanks. It'll do all the calculations for you, score.org. And once you've started to collect this data, now you've collected your budget, you've collected your personal financial statement, I need you to take a big, deep breath because now we're going to tell your spouse. Your spouse deserves to know this, but you, like me, have probably been hiding it. In the early days of my business, man, I was terrified to tell my wife how bad we were doing. I couldn't tell her. I mean, I was just scared. And so month after month after month of struggle, I just started to shut down. I wouldn't talk to her about money at all. I wouldn't talk to my friends or family or anybody. In fact, I own my business 100%. I don't have any partners or investors. I had to just talk to myself about it. And in the worst of times, man, they would turn the lights off at my house. I still wouldn't talk about it with my wife. When when the, when the my wife would say, hey, we got to pay 800 bucks to get the lights turned back on, um, I would pay like 400 of it. She'd be like, well, why didn't we just pay the whole bill in full? And I'd like, I'd make up some cockamamie bullshit like, well, why would we give the utility company our money, right? I mean, if they're going to give us 30 days, let's use the utility company's money instead of our money to pay the bill in full. The reality is I didn't have the money to pay the bill in full. I just had the money to pay the bill enough to get the lights turned on. Chasing my tail all the time. And I can remember it like it was yesterday, man. I can remember the day that it all came to a head for me. I remember literally, I'm I'm thinking about it right now in the studio, how the door, I remember getting out of my car, walking across my lawn up to the front door, and I can remember touching the doorknob. And I knew what was going to happen. And I walked in that day and my wife knew the jig was up, man. She was tired of being bullshitted. My little Rocky, five foot two, redhead Spitfire, was not going to take shit anymore. And she said, "What the hell's going on, man? What, why, why are they turning off our electric? What's the story?" And I said, "We're we're broke." I'm like scrambling to pay the bills. I mean, y'all, I can remember. You go back about 15 years, man. I would take a fifty dollar check from Commercial Fleet, my company. And I would run to the bank to deposit it just to cover household bills. I mean, that's what happens in the entrepreneurial world. You have to do that to stay afloat. You got to do whatever you can to stay in business. The idea is to stay in business for the next day. I get it. I understand that pain of small business ownership and entrepreneurship and getting it off the ground. But sooner or later, 
It has to work. Otherwise, you're in the wrong damn business. You're in the wrong what I call platform, and you may have to make a leap. But during the process, you don't have to do it alone. you got to tell your spouse sooner or later, and here's how you're going to do it. And here's how it happened for me. I walked in, and Rocky knew the jig was up. I mean, she was tired of being bullshitted, and she said, did you pay yourself this week? And I had lied to her. All those other times she'd ask me that question, I'd say yes. And this time I told her the truth, and I said no. She said, you didn't take a check this week? I said no, and I haven't taken a check for months. There's no money to pay me, no money to pay us. And I remember the look in her eye when she said, I'm going to ask you one more question. Did you pay your employees? And I said, yes. And she flipped, lost her mind. How could you do that to us? Meaning her and the boys, even though, even though at that time I only had one kid. And she went into the bedroom and she slammed the door and I spent another night on the couch. But I I knew at that moment that it was going to stop, that I was going to fix it. It started with, if you if you see, listen to the Accumulation Mode episode of the podcast, you, you should. And if you haven't, go back and listen to that episode, The Power of Accumulation Mode. I started to say I'm in Accumulation Mode. That cut out a lot of the spending. Got really focused on driving revenue too. But in order for you to do it, you got to do it differently than I did it. Once you have your budget and once you have your personal financial statement filled out, you need to schedule a family money meeting. Now, notice what I said. I'm being very calm when I say this. Schedule it. Because what most people will do is after they come up with the budget and the personal financial statement and the data is showing them that how broke they are, they freak out and they run into the house and they tell everybody around exactly how the cow is going to eat the cabbage and that is going to backfire on you. Schedule a family money meeting. And don't do it for like this afternoon. Do it for three weeks down the road, maybe on a Sunday at five o'clock. You're going to get the family together. If you don't have a family, it's just your spouse. If it's not a spouse, it's just you. And you're going to sit at the table and you're going to present the data. You're not going to have opinions about it. You're not going to be judgmental that your wife or your husband spends too much money or that they don't make enough money. That's why your family can't live. You're just going to present the data. No dropping bombs. Just present the budget first, probably even withhold the personal financial statement and just simply present the budget. And then you could present the personal financial statement. And if you're starting to get buy-in of, wow, we really are behind. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do about this? Then you might even want to go a step further in your presentation of data. And you might want to go to DaveRamsey.com, DaveRamsey.com, and type in the search bar, Retirement Calculator. And if you're watching this on YouTube right now, you'll see what I'm doing. I'm showing this stuff on the screen right now as we're doing it. And you can type in retirement calculator on Dave Ramsey's website. I, as you know, am not a huge fan of Dave Ramsey's small money makeover stuff. Eat rice and beans and beans and rice. Get a $1,000 savings account. I don't think any of that shit moves the needle in net worth. I think you need to make big moves. And you can make the big moves. And most people don't make big moves. They make small moves. And the small move doesn't matter. You need to make big radical changes to change your money situation. But in order to do it, you got to know the data. So on Dave Ramsey's site, it's a great website, tremendous tools. They're all free. Simply type in your age. Say you typed in 35 years old. The age that you plan to retire, let's just say it's 65. Then it's going to ask you, how much do you have saved for retirement? Now, like I said, 69% of Americans have less than a thousand bucks in their savings account, but put in a thousand bucks. How much can you contribute monthly? Here's where it gets a little crazy for you when you're doing this exercise. You can't put in a hundred bucks or 200 bucks. You got to put in real numbers. You got to put in thousands. So put in a thousand bucks. And then it's going to ask you, what is the annual rate of return? And I'm going to say to you, put in 6%. You can get 6% in a mutual fund. When you hit calculate, it's going to tell you what your retirement is going to be worth at the age of 65. And so we just did that in the studio right now. And it says when you do that, that your retirement at the age of 65, if you start with a thousand and you put in a thousand, you will have $650,000 saved up. Now, when you read my book, you will realize that 650,000 doesn't mean shit. 
It's way too low. So we got to get really serious about cranking up the revenue stream, which I talk about in the book and I'll talk about in a later podcast. But for right now, when you do that exercise with him or her or just yourself on Dave Ramsey's website and you show $650,000 in your retirement, it's going to show you the data that you're behind. And maybe that's what your spouse needs to see. See, you're not telling him or her the truth and therefore they're putting all their trust in you. They believe that you're going to fix it or that you're fixing it, that you've put them on the right path. But you and I know that you haven't. You and I know that you are behind. And my book helps you fix it. This podcast is going to help you fix it. Future episodes when I start to drop the content of how do we create this revenue machine, what I call a personal ATM machine, this things that really fire up your income opportunities and your income potential. But you got to know where you are. And that's how you communicate with your significant other that your ass is broke. You have to show them data. If you come at them with judgment and blame and criticism, the whole thing's going to backfire. Because in order for you to crank up your revenue stream, you need a support center. If you're not married, that support center needs to be your friends or your coworkers or your mentors. You don't have to do it alone. But if you are married, you got to get your spouse on the same page, my man. They've got to look at you as the freaking hero and they will die on the sword for you. They will run through fire for you, but you've got to show them the truth. And you do that by the creation of your budget, the creation of your personal financial statement, and the creation of your retirement calculator. And when you do that, hopefully they will see the truth of how far behind you really are. That's the purpose of today's episode. How do you tell your spouse that you're broke? And you might want to go and say that we're going to crash and burn. We're going to burn the ships. And we're going to change everything overnight. And that is most of the time not going to work for you. Your spouse is not going to buy into that. If he or she has certain spending habits or they have a certain lifestyle, it's going to take you a little bit of time to fix that. By the way, you're going to have to fix it. If your spouse overspends, you got to fix that. You've got to re- pull those reins in. Because when you start cranking up more revenue, if you don't fix that problem, you know what they're going to do? They're going to increase their spending problem. They're not going to pull back with you unless you're on the same page. How do you tell your spouse you're broke? You don't have to right now. You just got to tell yourself that you're broke. Me and you, just the two of us on this podcast, it's a safe zone for you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you make more money. 